אמסטרדם, יד עם מרקישון, לירב כיליון, תולר ז'ד אמסטרדם. Dans le port d'Amsterdam, il y a des marins qui dorment Comme des oriflammes le long des berges mornes Dans le port d'Amsterdam, il y a des marins qui meurent Plein de bière et de drames aux premières lueurs Mais dans le port d'Amsterdam, il y a des marins qui naissent Dans la chaleur épaisse des longueurs océanes We were flying to Amsterdam from Russia and the weather in Moscow for this time of year was excellent It was warm and dry and I expected this to be even better in Netherlands Amsterdam meets us with heavy rains and strong winds and actually in general it looked like a city of broken umbrellas and abandoned bicycles. And the reality became much more complicated with the fact that we were not going to stay in the city because the plan was to leave the port of heaven again, located in the outskirts of The Hague and sail the seas. And the ship chosen for such a sailing was a clipper named Stead Amsterdam. For the first time in my life I saw her a couple of years ago in the port of Santa Cruz de Tenerife in the Gunner Rounds and I was practically killed with what I have faced because you know it was a ship which came directly from the pages of the books I read when I was a child I said I need to make a sail on the board of this ship and well you can easily imagine how lucky I was having finally found myself on the deck of the clipper The plan was to leave Netherlands, well this country is not indicated on my chart, let's assume it's somewhere out of the world, so we plan to get to the North Sea. Pass the channel, go around France, cross the Biscay Bay and sail in south where it's reached the city of Porto in Portugal within some 10 days. We went to the North Sea and I wouldn't say that the weather became much better, it was stormy and windy, but you know, the clipper justified her name simply clipping the waves and sailing ahead absolutely stably. incredible look of a tall ship going out of the sails was so fascinating that to make this perfect picture be absolutely completed we probably elect just a couple of executive criminals hanging down on their ropes from the yard arms.
I guess I have to say a couple of words about uh, the Clipper herself. The Stade Amsterdam is a three-masted replica tall ship with a deck length of uh, 60.5 meters or approximately 200 feet and 30 sails which in common give you 20 to 100 square meters of sailing area. She may go at a speed of 70 knots on the sail and around 11 knots on the engine. And all the sails are operated manually by means of ropes. You always see all those ropes. Hanging the coils on belaying pin racks, snaking around the pins, cast it down on the deck or belayed and fixed again on the pins. I've counted around 250 pins and I'm not quite sure I've counted all of them. It's a real kingdom of ropes. Sometimes I felt just as a fly which got into a spider's web and it seemed that people capable to tell one rope from another were at least magicians, secret keepers of some sacred knowledge which I would never be allowed to perceive. All those clue lines, bunt lines, sheet lines, leech lines, and whatever they are called lines, to me were just a damn mess of numberless ropes. But later the crew members delivered to us some lectures on this matter, and to our surprise we saw how chaos becomes a system. Some lines were belayed on wooden pins, some on pins made of brass, some passed through wooden food blocks, etc. All these were the hints helping us to grasp the whole system. Some blocks were surrounded with a kind of weak works, I ain't got no clue how they should be called properly. I simply called it uh, in the French manner, macrame. But what was bad about all those lines is the fact that you always have to hold them. You pull the lines when you hoist the sails, when you take the sails off, when the ship goes tacking or when she goes wearing, you always pull the lines. And you always do it by hand. Ask me about the winches. Yes, we did have the winches. On the boat, for example, we had devices looking like classical sailboat winches. They were used to set up the jibs. We also have five capstans, two along each board and one on the foredeck. But they were used quite rarely, mainly uh, for mooring operations. We also had three brace winches, one for each mast. It is such a labor-reducing device which bears the name of uh, its inventor, a Scottish captain, John Charles Baron Jarvis. Mm, but those winches could only be used to brace up the ears. When making a turn, you use a Captain Jarvis brace winch and you see how fast 
and what is more important, simultaneously all the yards go around this or that mast. And this is all about the winches. Mainly we hold the lines by hand counts in 2 6, two, six. Well, sometimes Zwei X. One day, by the way, I even heard the same in Finnish, Uxi Kaksi. And believe me or not, it really helped. During night time, the same procedure is much more complicated when having 250 lines. Please try to find in the darkness the one you really need at the moment. vessels we met in the sea were overtaken us easily, proving the fact that the era of tall ships is unfortunately left behind. But I must say that we felt absolutely comfortable in our 19th century. We also had an engine and we even used it sometimes, especially when the winds were not favorable. But the main part of our trip was made under the sails. Any sailing is not just a simple going straightly from point A to point B. When we left the channel I thought it would go like this. But then the wind changed our plans greatly and by the end of the sailing our route was looking approximately like that. During his daily briefings, the uh, captain was giving us information about vessel positions, weather forecasts, his idea on how we proceed and all this kind of stuff. And every day he held the same but more detailed and more professional briefing with the crew gathered around him either on the captain's bridge or simply somewhere on the deck. Our doctor also delivered us a lecture on some medical nuances one may face when sailing. But in any case, the real life took place not inside the ship, not in the long room, but on the deck. For some sailors up on the mess, uh, along the yards. And also the real wildlife was boiling up around us in the sea. We saw whales coming close to the clipper. Some people say they were thin whales. I cannot say anything about this. I'm not a specialist in the creation of gray sea mammals. Flocks of dolphins accompanied us all the way down to our final destination. One day the captain announced a fire drill. He even appointed a victim of the fire. And I kind of believe that this guy had made a mistake when choosing his profession. He has to be an actor, not a sailor. The doctor even put his glasses on 
to figure out if his patient was still alive or probably already dead. say we had plenty of entertainment when sailing. The sailing itself entertained us. In any case, we were quite busy with different duties. And living this life day by day and mile by mile, we were getting closer and closer to the city of Porto. There is uh, there are two actually of them that they have and half point port side. There is one big one and a small one. The third mate on the ship was a Russian guy and he explained to us how the control systems functioned here and he showed us the instruments used on the bridge. The intercom is connected to the общий the Public address system, автопилот, GPS, NAVTEX, вторая вещь. ВМССБ установка, Инварсат Си, МФХФ. Being a ship which actually came from the past, Stade Amsterdam is in reality an absolutely modern vessel equipped with any type of electronics you can only think about. At the same time, she still keeps the secrets of the past, such as this cannon. I believe with that type of weapon in our adventure sailing, we were undoubtedly ready for any possible adventure. We could even shoot down the search and rescue chopper but being quite peaceful seafarers, we never did this and you know, let it fly away freely. In my cabin I spent time looking into the porthole. I understand that I acted uh, just as a very curious but absolutely stupid cat looking at the uh, washing machine. But this comparison didn't bother me much because I could spend hours like this. Right before our arrival to Portugal, the weather worsened again and the port authorities asked us to speed up and enter in the port, since because of the declining weather conditions they were about to stop the traffic coming there. I know this may sound strange. But I always have one of the same feeling when uh, at the end of a sailing I approach to the so-called firm ground. I do understand that there are people on the land who wait for me and whom I actually miss. But when I see a port, all I want to do is to make a turn and get back to the sea again. And I simply can't help but feel like this. And this was the feeling I had when we came to the port of Lakes, located in the suburbs of Porto. And I had nothing to do but to cope with this feeling because I understood and it was absolutely clear that unfortunately our sailing has come to an end.
Fraca do povo Nem sei dizer se é um fado Que eu vindo ao rio We spent three days in Porto The second biggest city of Portugal Well, for us Russians, with our crazy uh, cities, it doesn't look like a city at all. I would rather depict it as a nice, quite picturesque, maybe uh, a bit shabby, while pretty clean and very calm town. I did like our staying there. I did like the restaurants and wine, people and birds, modern bridges and uh, old buildings. But you know, walking down the streets, looking at the river, drinking the famous local port wine, and listening to the street singers, I was always getting in my thoughts back to the clipper, back to our sailing, back to Stad Amsterdam. <laughs> She left Portugal for the Canary Islands, and all I could say about all that, seven feet under the kill, guys, and fair winds to all of you. <laughs> Oh, what a pity that our sailing was that short. It was actually short, and this is why I dream that one day I'll make a step, and I find myself again on the deck of Stad Amsterdam, sailing to the ocean. Drão. Os meninos são todos santos. Os pecados são todos meus Deus sabe a minha confissão Não há o que perdoar Por isso mesmo é que há So, from now on I'll be waiting for this day Vive e morre pão Grão, 